Early ZZ. <laughs> It says angry chant. Now, even with the humbuckers, that's a noisy sound. But you know, I guess if you wanted that, if you wanted that, uh, that uh, uh, feedback type sound. Crazy. This is 40, it says heavy shoegaze. That's my supposed to It's supposed to be a grunge sound. This one is her rhapsody. So I guess it's about a human rhapsody sort of sound. <laughs> This is Blues Lead 2. I'm just failing tonight, folks. This is Modern Metal, number 43. <laughs> Another one of those sounds that cuts out on you if your volume's not high enough. Maybe it's just not the, the meaning of the sound. Maybe the sound is more to. And then if that's the case, that it is. It's not, I'm not gonna use that one much, probably. I guess it's a Leslie sound. It's called slow spin. If you're not in stereo, you're not realizing the spin, I guess, but it does sound Leslie-ish, doesn't it? This says Bright Prince. Yeah, this would probably sound better with the single hole pickups. Let's switch back for a minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
which this is called desert rock. <laughs> That's probably like a ZZ Top song. <laughs> this says Roots Rhythm. Too harsh. I'm going to back off on my uh, tone here. sound. Uh, this is Choppy Deluxe. This is 49, this says Electric Love. I would have thought that might be like Electric Ladyland, kind of a Hendrix sound. Number 50 is Sweeping Flanger. I'm not gonna, way out of 10 on that. Okay, so again, a little noise. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the guitar off. So let me give you my overall opinion of this little amp. If you've ever played through a Mustang One, version one of the Mustang uh, amp, you'll, you'll get very inspired by it. This one too, I think. I mean, I have to say, um, I, I've, I played for a week with it. I, I, some, some of it, just the, the noise level, I don't understand how some could be so clean and still so distorted. I'm going to have to dig down into the presets and see what makes them tick, you know, and how I can apply, I guess, uh, noise reduction. Or, you know, here's the thing, too. A lot of those are so overdriven, and there's so much stuff going on there, particularly the compressor, I think, is a little, a little maybe noisy. I believe I would use maybe my boss compression or something rather. Yeah, and I'm not a big user of compression. Um, I like the, some dynamics when I'm out playing, and uh, I never have used much compression. A little bit if I'm playing sort of, finger chicken picking kind of stuff uh so probably what i'll do is i think that's one of the big problems because i seem to some of these are pretty quiet patches that have the uh distorted sounds and uh i'm gonna end up probably just dismantling everything that this amp is but i thought i'd show you what I'll, i don't know if anyone has shown all the patches yet in a video and I apologize that I switched from a strat where I broke the string and then had to go to the telly and then went to the other telly. But, uh, and there should be another video done where it's all probably humbucking sound. Um, I tell you what, I've played through an Oscar Schmidt little OS50 and it sounded great. I've not, uh, believe it or not, not pulled my list poly out. I've been playing on cheaper guitars. I say a cheaper amp. I play through cheap guitars to a cheap amp and see what I think of it. And so far I've been liking it. 
Some of the presets, particularly the distorted ones, uh, on the original Mustang, I like better. And, uh, yeah, this is sleeker. It's cooler look. It's it's probably easier to navigate and get the sound that you're looking for in there. I, I miss the fact, I don't think you've got a uh, an option to do a, like a tone room type thing like you do with, with the uh, old Mustang, which I have. I still get, have a blast going through there and looking at different sounds and trying to concoct what I can with it. Uh, uh, yeah, here's the thing. I had two of the Mustang uh, ones, the, the original Mustang ones, and I would play them in stereo. I get, recently gave one away to a young man. I gave him a guitar, and uh, he needed an amp. And so, I, you know, I, I do that from time to time. Uh, you don't write me and ask me to do that. I don't do it all the time. But I think I'm going to enjoy, though, now having a little different take on the sounds and a little bit different approach to the... Uh, to the modeling. I think it's going to be cool to do a stereo pair. Maybe I'll do a video where I do a stereo pair where I show what it sounds like to have the uh, LT25 on one side and the uh, the old original Mustang on the other. Here's the other thing I'll say. For recording, for 150 bucks, this is probably a really good option. And I've not yet used the USB and gone into like Logic and tried it to see how it records. I'm getting ready to do that. I'll probably do a future video that shows how that works and, and if it's good and clean, sounds nice. Uh, through the through the speaker, the 8-inch speaker, it is very loud. I mean, you can turn that thing up. Once you get past uh, the the noon on the uh, on the master control, you got plenty of volume. I can't imagine for recording if you're going to record from a speaker that you'd need more. Um, there, there's a website by the way called Five Watt Life, I think it's called or something like that. I'll put a link in. That guy's got some great videos, and he's talking about how you can make more music with less gear, and I agree with him for the most part. I've been kind of the champion of cheaper guitars, just learning how to play better on your instrument. I wish I were a better player, but hopefully and hopefully, you can indulge me here. But this is a good amp for 150 bucks. This is great. Uh, I always thought that the Mustang one at like $119 was fantastic, uh, particularly if you can get by with small amps. And see, so here's the thing too. Do you want this massive sound? Even if you're going out and playing, I know it looks impressive to have a big amp, and I've got my Katana 100 over here. I've got uh, uh, you know some some big amps, and and in some cases I think I need that. Uh, if you're playing with a place that has a good PA system though, or you know, a band that has a good PA, they can mic up a little bit amp and it'll sound just fine. You maybe need to get that big amp thought out of your head. And that guy, I say from Five Watt Life, I think it's called. He is brilliant explaining that to you, and showing you how you can get, like I say, more sound than you think you can out of less gear. And smaller gear, and uh, but anyway, this amp is much fun for 149 bucks. It's probably worth buying. Just know that you'll deal with some with some uh, some noise issues. I have to say, I was quite impressed with the way this guitar handled it. It's actually uh, I, I had not actually played this guitar. I just grabbed it up during the uh, during the course of the video, and it sounded better. It sounded better through that amp than it does through some of my other amps. Um, so the single coils do okay. I think maybe still this might be a guitar better for noiseless pickups and for humbucking pickups. My take after playing with it for a week. I can say more. I won't at this point. This has been a lengthy video. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And more to come with the Fender LT25, a very cool amp. Thanks.